have no idea if the numbers will work out nicely. I'm not too worried about that. Um, so in general, if I'm going to write the equation of a sphere, it's very similar to starting to write the equation of a circle, meaning the two things that I need are the center and the radius. Well, if these represent diameter endpoints, then if these are the endpoints for the diameter of a circle to get the center, I need the midpoint. So the first thing that I would do is find the midpoint for that circle. And we're going to use the same midpoint formula from first quarter calculus. So I'm going to take my two x values, add them up, and divide by two. Same with my y values, take the two points, zero plus three, add them up, divide by two. Same for my z's, and have four plus five, and divide that by two. So my center is going to be six halves, or three, three halves, and nine halves. So already I know that the form for my equation is going to look like x minus 3 squared plus y minus 3 halves squared plus z minus 9 halves squared is equal to my radius squared. There are a couple of different ways that we can find the radius. One is certainly by using the distance formula. The other option is we know that both of these points must satisfy this equation. So that means that if we plugged either of these points in, we can actually get a value for r squared without having to use the distance formula. Essentially, we're doing the same arithmetic as if we were doing the distance formula. This just always feels a little more straightforward for me. So it doesn't matter which one we pick, um, but I'm going to go with the 835. So if I plug in 8 for x, then I'll have 8 minus 3 squared. 3 for y, so 3 minus 3 halves squared. And 5 for z z minus 9 halves squared. And that is the value of r squared. And for sure, if I was tight on time on the quiz, I would quit there, move on, work through other problems, come back and simplify that only if I felt like I had extra time.